Hello and welcome back to my Java tutorial series. This will be episode 4. As you can see, the finished product we had for episode 3. Now I'm starting up a new Java project for episode 4. We will be covering conditionals and inequalities and equalities. <laughs> so let's just start up episode 4, Java project. You know the basic routine, basic package with our main class. Set up the standard system. I what the hell just happened there? Now after this episode and the next episode, which will be loops, I'm going to get into more of the structure of Java as well as object-oriented programming but we just want to get past um, conditionals and loops so let's get into conditionals which this will mainly be oriented around the conditionals will be around booleans which also happen to include inequalities which will include integers and other things so let's get started now to get started, let us declare a couple variables. Oh, what the? Okay. Okay. Okay, static. Okay. Now there are several things that um, conditionals are used for. They're one of the main things you'll be using for uh, for in programming because you know if you want to check something, you do an if or a switch. And switches are amazing, and I love switches. But uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> so let's do something simple. If true. True is a keyword, false is a keyword, basically if, in this parentheses, you can put anything that results in a boolean. Now true results in a boolean because it's a boolean. So if we do um, that, that means since true happens to be true, it'll print out whatever we tell it to print out. So, now what we can also do we can do false, which means it won't print it out since false equals false. But what we can do that's part of if is else. So that means if true. Oh, wait. Let me just set this. If true is true, it'll print out our first thing. And if true isn't true, it'll print out this thing. But true happens to be true, so it'll print out it did work. But if we happen to do exclamation true, which I tell you about exclamation true, which means the opposite of true is false, so that means it'll mean the if didn't work. Now again, we can do this with any boolean value, so we can put in bool1, which equals true, so that means it'll just automatically output that. But, one of the most important things is equalities and inequalities. So let's say if int1 is less than int2, now think about it, 5, which is int1, versus 10, which is int2. 5 is less than 10. And this outputs a boolean because it's an inequality. So it's either true or false. That's easy. Now, there's other things, like if int1 is less than or equal to, which it's still less than, so it'll mean it works. But if we happen to do int3, 10 versus 10, 10 is not less than 10, but it is equal to. So less than or equal to. So that'll work. If we just simply did less than, it wouldn't work. If you did greater than, it wouldn't work. Less than or equal. I think I might have gotten those confused. Well, okay. But either way, in order to make a less than, which is, you know, 
one of these arrows. In order to make them less, add the equals to, you just put an equal sign after them. So that's less than or equal to, that's greater than or equal to. Now what else we can do is equals. You might have seen when we set a variable, we do a single equal sign. When we check variables to see if they equal each other, we do a double equal sign. If we do a single equal sign, that won't be anything because that's just setting and it doesn't return a boolean. So if we add another one, it checks. So 10 equals 10, so it worked. But then we can do exclamation point to see if they don't equal. So basically this saying if int 3 doesn't equal this, it'd be the same as doing this saying the opposite of them equaling which you know you can put the exclamation point in front of anything that would be boolean so that means that means since these do equal each other them not equaling would return false and of course we can just put this back here for simplicity's sake so that means um, because 10 equals 10. So if 10 does not equal 10, it returns true. But since 10 equals 10, it returned false and went to the else statement. I mean, you could make an infinite one of these, you know, to say else if, but that's only for complex things. So now let's do something else. In the if statement, you can also use things such as logic gate and, or it's also called, um, yeah, conditional and, or conditional or, if you know logic gates or, or, you know, actual basic human logic, it'll do something. So if true and true is true, then it'll, then it'll return true. But if true, if true and false are true, then it'll return true. But since false is in there, it won't do anything. And then we can do, so that means both of these things have to return true, or else it'll be false. If we do, and those are just double ampersands, if we do double line down, that means either of these. If either of these are true, then it'll return true. So since one of these are true, it'll return true. And we, yeah, dead code. Okay. So another way we can do this, if integer 1 is less than integer 2 and integer 2 equals integer 3 this should return true since 5 is less than 10 and 10 equals 10 now if we change this to doesn't equal it'll return false since both of these conditions are not meant then if we just do or if either or both of these conditions are met so if since the one of at least one of since this one works and this one doesn't it's or so e either of them could work it works and even if both of them worked it can also work so that's the basic basic uh, conditional thing there's one more thing that you need to know that will make a lot more sense when we actually get into basics of object oriented program which means you know they have different classes and there's different objects and different objects can extend objects which means it's a child of that class. Now it happens that string extends the object class, which means string is a child of object and object the parent of string. So if we do, if we set up a string here, one second, just set it to nothing. So that means if string one instance instance of string it is an instance of string since string is a string so it'll return work it worked but if in and also if we did instance of object it should return true since string is an instance of object and string one is an instance of string which is an instance of object so just an infinite chain so basically, what we can also do is a different class, like integer. Integer is a class that is... What? Maybe that'll work. Maybe... Huh, really. How about JFrame? Maybe that'll work. 
Oh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. So maybe we're checking. And don't worry about what a J-frame is. I'll go over that when I go into a swing tutorial. Swing is an API, which is a um, something program interface. It might be applied program interface or applicable something. I'll definitely specify it when we get more into it. But it's a swing is an API pre-installed with Java that is amazing for helping you with. Um, Amazing for helping you with GUIs and Windows and stuff. We'll get over that eventually. So basically, string1 is an instance of string, which is an instance of object. Oh, but now, if we made an object... So we have an object. If object... Object is an instance of object. So this should return it worked. It is an incident of object. That's weird. But if we, um, maybe I have to declare it. Yeah. So now if we do, if it's an instance of object, this should return correctly. See, it worked. But if we, re if it's an instance of string, which it isn't, string extends object, not the other way around. So this sh it shouldn't work. Because while a string is an instance of an object, an object isn't an instance of a string. This might be hard to understand, but trust me, it'll be a lot easier to understand once we get into the basic concepts of object-oriented programming. So, this episode was about uh, inequalities, equalities, conditional operators, conditionals, and all, all the like. Oh, one more thing. See, I almost forgot. My favorite conditional thing is called a switch. Basically, a switch does you. Basically, what a switch does. What a switch. Whatever you get my point. Whatever what a switch does is, you put in anything. So let's put in int one. So that means int one is an integer. Obviously, what we can do is type out case. 5, and right right there you could put any um, final integer, you'll learn more, but, but basically as long as it's constant, you can't put a variable here. So if we put int 2, we can't put int 2, because int 2 isn't a constant since it could change at any time. So we'll put 5, and in case, 15. So that, And we'll just put a default, because we'll do that. Break, what break does... Um, break, you can use it in like any if or any loop. We'll get more into it when we get into loops, but it'll just break out of the current thing so it doesn't continue on. It'll just break out of the switch. So basically, if we said like, um, we set out a print line over 5, we'll just put out equals equals 5. It doesn't matter. And we do system.printout equals equals 10 and then a printout equals 15 so basically what it does it passes passage integer 1 through which is 5 if it equals 5 it does this if it equals 10 it does this if it equals 15 it does this if it isn't any of those it just breaks but how cases work if it's 5 it'll do this and then this and then this if it's 10 it does this and then this what how do we stop that is like I said, put break. Actually, before I put that, I might as well just example it. So 5 equals 5. So it, it did all of those. But if we did break, so instead of going on to the next one, it just broke out of the switch, then you'll see it's a lot better behavior. So it equals 5. Then if we passed integer 2 through this, it'll be equals 10. So basically, the advantage of switches is that it's a condensed form of if integer 1 equals equals 5, do something or other. Else if integer 1 equals equals 10, do something or other. Else if integer 1 equals equals 15, do something or other. Else do something or other. 
it's basically a condensed form of that. Which basically, you know, normally you would have multiple blocks, so you'd like have it set up into different blocks, such as this. Which, of course, is a bit longer than a switch. Which is why I love switches. They're very versatile. Just delete all that. So it's a, it's a smaller and quicker form of that. Okay, now I'm done with this episode. Thank you for joining me on episode 4, Conditionals and Inequalities. And I will see you next time when we delve into loops.